الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين استفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه يجمعين أما بعض فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في آخر سورة الحجرات أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير قالت العراب آمنا قل لم تؤمنوا ولكن قولوا أسلمنا ولما يدخل الإيمان في قلوبكم وإن تطيعوا الله ورسوله لا يلدكم من أعمالكم شيئا إن الله غفور رحيم إنما المؤمنون الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله ثم لم يرتابوا وجاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم في سبيل الله أولئك هم الصادقون قل أتعلمون الله بدينكم والله يعلم ما في السماوات وما في الأرض والله بكل شيء عليم يمنون عليك أن أسلموا قل لا تمنوا علي إسلامكم بل الله يمن عليكم أن هداكم للإيمان إن كنتم صادقين إن الله يعلم غيب السماوات والأرض والله بصير بما تعملون صدق الله العظيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ربنا ألهمنا رشدنا وعزنا من شرور أنفسنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه اللهم ربنا اجعلنا من عبادك الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله ثم لم يرتابوا وجاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم في سبيل الله اللهم ربنا اجعلنا من عبادك الصادقين آمين يا رب العالمين Dear brothers and sisters and sons and daughters of Islam As you know the third and the last part of Surah Al-Hujurat consists of six ayat from 13th to 18th In the previous session last night we discussed ayah number 13. Today we shall be having a brief review about this ayah and then proceed to ayah 14 and 15 which are the most profound ayat not only of this surah al-mubarakah but the whole of the Quran on one special subject. This ayah number 13 we translated it Ya Yuhannas, and we noted specially that in this surah, before this ayah, five times Ya Yuhalladina Amanu has occurred. The address was to the Muslims. Ya Yuhalladina Amanu, Ya Yuhalladina Amanu, Ya Yuhalladina Amanu. But here we find Ya Yuhannas. This change of address is not without any reason, without any basis. Ya Yuhannas inna khalaqnakum O mankind We have created you all Whether you belong to the east or to the west or to the north or to the south You might be belonging to any race You might be having any color of your skin You might be speaking any language You might be living in any part of the world All of you we have created and we have created you from one human pair, one male and one female. Hazrat Adam and Hazrat Hawa alayhim as-salatu was-salam. Wa ja'allakum shu'ubam wa qaba'ila. 
and we ourselves have made you, differentiated you into nations and tribes. Leta'arafu. With the sole purpose that you should be able to recognize each other, identify each other. In akramakum in Allah atqaakum. Surely, verily, indeed, the most honorable amongst you is he who is most pious, who is the best in deeds, actions, who is the most righteous. In Allah alim al khabir. And verily, Allah is all knowing and aware of everything. So He knows who is pious and who has only taken upon himself an, ex, ex, an outward garment of piety and taqwa and virtue and who is really pious. We know it because we know you through and through. We see you through and through. Now this ayah, as I told you, it has two aspects. Because this surah, surah al-Hujarat, it is dealing with the community life, collective life of the Muslim Ummah at social as well as political level. So actually here also the first addressees are the Muslims. And especially to the context, the three ayat preceding this ayah, actually this ayah is throwing more light on those three ayat. We had the ayah, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ all moments, all believers, they are like brothers. Now this ayah is adding the dimension. There only one thing that was common between the moments that was referred to it, that is the Iman. You are all brothers because you are all moments. To add to it, here two more dimensions have been added to emphasize more on the brotherhood of the Muslims. Not only that you are all believers, you are all creatures of one Allah. You believe in one Allah. Then you all belong to one human pair. You are the progeny of Adam and Eve, alayhi salam, alayhi salatu wassalam. So you should behave as brothers. Number two, in the preceding two ayat we found, don't laugh at each other. Don't mock at each other. There should be no derision, no mockery, no scorn, no looking down upon each other, no backbiting, having no bad notions, suspicions. And the root of all these evils is a superiority complex. All these things are based on a superiority complex. We are superior. And the root is cut by this ayah. You are all equal. You are all human beings, all sons of Adam, all created by the same Allah. So there is no one superior, no one inferior. As I told you, according to the Islam, there is no concept of superiority or inferiority among the human beings on the basis of those things which are given to them, which are not acquired by them. Where he was born, what color he had of his skin, which part of the world he was born, of which race he was born, whether he was born a male or a female, he or she, all these things you know, they are not acquired by any human being. It's not the option, it's not the choice. So all these things, they cannot be made basis of any sense of superiority and inferiority. All human beings by birth are absolutely equal in status. This is actually a very revolutionary idea. But even the enemies of Islam have accepted it. That Islam could do it practically. I quoted the saying of H.G. Wells. Although the sermons of human fraternity and equality and freedom were said before also, we find these sermons abundantly in Jesus Christ, but it must be accepted. It was Muhammad وسلم, who established a society practically, actually, on the basis of these principles. 
And you know, a person belonging to this part of the world, Malcolm X, Al Malika Shahbaz, you know, a very notable person he was, no doubt. And he saw the scene during his Hajj. All races, from all corners of the world, and people having every shade of color, from red to, you may, you may say, you know, the yellow, then browns, then blacks, but there was no distinction whatsoever. It seemed they are all brothers, they are all equal. No dissent, no dispute, nothing of this sort. So this is a practical demonstration. And that demonstration, we actually don't get impressed by it because we are accustomed to it. But you know, a person who sees it for the first time, he cannot see such a scene anywhere in the world. But he sees it there. And then the congregation, you know, salah, prayer being said in congregation, as if a military parade is going on. One command and whole congregation is going down. Another command and the whole congregation is standing up. So this is actually a very impressive scene. So this is the aspect of this ayah which is related to the preceding ayat. In itself, if we focus our eyes on the wordings of this ayah, we get, you know, a basis, a criterion of who is honorable, who is respectable. And this is very important. If these values change in Muslim society, and they have changed, practically changed throughout the world, you will find people who have more wealth, they are respected. People don't see whether that wealth was accumulated through halal means or haram means. But whosoever has wealth is respected. He becomes honorable in the society. This is just contrary to the teaching of Islam. There is a saying of the Prophet ﷺ, Man waqqara sahaba bid'atin, faqad aana ala had min islam. Whosoever respects a person who is committing bid'ah, who is distorting the teachings of Islam, he has actually abetted in, in the destruction of Islam. Man waqqara sahaba bid'atin, faqad aana ala had min islam. There's another saying of the Prophet. When a fasik person who is not pious, who is not practicing Islam, who is not obeying deen, who is not practicing deen, when you know he is being praised, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ghazib Allah ta'ala becomes angry. And he becomes so angry that his arsh, his throne trembles due to the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iza mudih al-fasiq, ghazib Allah ta'ala, wa tazza lahu al-arsh. Allah ta'ala becomes angry. And the anger is so much that his arsh trembles. So this should be the criteria in a Muslim society. There should be respect only for those who are pious, who are knowledgeable who are muttaqi, about whom people know that they practice Islam. And this has happened actually. Harun Rashid, the most renowned caliph of the Abbasid, Abbasid dynasty, he was on Hajj along with his wife Zubaydah, very beloved Queen Zubaydah, very renowned. But there Zubaydah, the Queen saw, and people were not paying heed to Harun Rashid, although he was king, so to say, and he was the caliph. And there was some imam, I don't remember the name of that imam, a person who was very knowledgeable and who was muttaqi. People knew him, adored him, loved him. Always people were around him. Nobody was paying heed to Harun Rashid. The queen said to, the, to her husband, actually the king is he, not you. He has the kingdom over the hearts of the people. He is reigning over the hearts of the people. Your command or your reign is only covering the bodies of the people. 
not their hearts. This should be the criteria. Inna akramakum in the atqaakum. The standard that Allah has, we should have it. If you know we differ from the standard or criteria of Allah, then we, we are not with Him. So that should be the criterion of respect in the Muslim society. Number three, because here the wordings are used, Ya Ayyuhan Nas. These wordings have given this ayah a very broader context, a very broad connotation. What is that connotation? First of all, what relations can have the Muslims with the non-Muslims, the believers with the non-believers? Because Ya Ayyuhan Nas covers both. Among the people there are the believers, there are non-believers. Can there be any relationship? Well, two things are common. They don't believe in what you believe. But nevertheless, they are also created by Allah. They are the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, they also belong to the same family of Adam and Eve. Progeny of Adam and Eve. So you can have cordial relations. This is a very important point. Because although we find in the Quran that a true mu'min shouldn't love a non-Muslim or a kafir. Love should be heartfelt love. Should be only innama waliyyukum allahu wa rasooluhu wa lazina aman. This mutual love should be only for Allah, for his messenger and for those who believe. But to have cordial relations, to have gentleman type relationship, well this is not forbidden. Except for those who are at war with you, who are opposing you, who are the enemies of Allah, who are active in resisting the deen of Allah, their case is different. So here let me quote, you know, the strongest ayat regarding this subject appear in Surah al mumtahrina Ayah number 8 says, لَا يَنْهَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ لَمْ يُقَاتِلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ وَلَمْ يُخْرِجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ أَنْ تَبَرُّوهُمْ وَتُخْسِتُوا إِلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُخْسِتِينَ Allah doesn't prohibit you from having cordial relations, doing good to them. تَبَرُّوهُمْ be kind to them. But those of the non-Muslims only who never fought you, who never went to war against you, who didn't turn out you from your homes. You can't have such relations with Quraysh. They turned you out from your homes. They impelled you, compelled you to leave Mecca. They invaded so many times even Medina. But those of them who didn't actively participate against you in war, for them you can be, you can be friendly. You can do good to them. And tabarruhum, bil, the same word, laysal birra an tuvallu wujuhakum qibal al mashriqib al maghrib. You can have that attitude with them. And you can deal with them justly. The next ayah says, إِنَّمَا يَنْهَاكُمُ اللَّهُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ قَاتَلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ But verily and surely Allah prohibits you from having this relationship with those who fought against you regarding your deen. وَأَخْرَجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ And they turned you out of your homes. وَزَاهَرُوا عَلَىٰ إِخْرَادِكُمْ and they made a joint front against you. Don't make friends with them. And whosoever makes friends with them, well, they are the transgressors. So these two ayat are very important. Because, you know, all human beings, whether they are believers or non-believers, have two things in common. They all were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same Allah, not some other creator. They were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they belong to the same family, the progeny of Adam and Eve. And the final thing about this ayah, and which is very important in the context of the present time, 
Everybody knows that due to the advance in technology, this world of ours has shrunk in size. Distances have virtually disappeared. This world is now like one, one city. No distances. Media so developed that now this world has become very small. So the need of the time is that people should also feel closer to each other. Their bodies have come very close. The distances in the world have disappeared. So they should be close. But we find the distances in the hearts are the same. Mandigram to degree. We are different. You are something else, I am something else. The demand of the time is that there should be one world state. That is why in the early part of the century the League of Nations was established. But it failed. Why did it fail? It was established because there was some, some need was felt. Because the world has shrunk in size. So we should come close. We should have something, some common platform to sit and settle our disputes. But it failed. I recall a very beautiful couplet of Allama Iqbal. He prophesied the death of League of Nations. Bechari kai ro se dam tor rahi hai. Dar hai khabar hai badna mere muh se nikal jaye. تقدیر تو مبرم نظر آتی ہے وہ لیکن پیران کلیسا کی دعا ہے کہ یہ ٹل جائے بٹ اٹ کولن بی پوسٹ پونڈ اٹ ایپ سولیوٹلی اٹرلی فیلڈ بٹ دین یونائٹڈ نیشن واز اسٹیبلشڈ دس از اے کلیئر پروف دیٹ دیر از اے نیڈ نتھنگ ہیپنز ود آؤٹ اے نیڈ یو نو دی ایکسیم از ڈیمانڈ اینڈ سپلائی اف سم تھنگ از بینگ سپلائی دیر از سم ڈیمانڈ دیر از سم نیڈ ٹو وچ دس سپلائی از کیٹرنگ So there is the need, but the United Nations has also failed, absolutely failed. It couldn't gain the confidence and trust of the smaller nations and smaller countries. So I wanted to point out that because this world has become small, there is a need for whole of humanity to come closer. But how to come closer? The distances between the hearts are the same. These can only be reduced If the concept of these two common factors is emphasized that although we might have different colors, maybe we have different cultures, maybe we have different backgrounds, but we all belong to one nation, the progeny of Adam and Eve, and we are all created by one creator, that is Allah, that is God. But for that you must believe in God first, and there is no belief in God. Materialism, this universe has as if come into being by itself, no creator. It's going on and going on by itself, automatically. No controller. Yudabbirul amra min as ila lard. We believe in Allah who is controlling this universe and He is making the tadbir from above towards the earth, from the heavens to the earth. Yudabbirul amra bin asamayla. But who knows, who, whosoever doesn't believe. Where from can he get something common between di this different races and different nations and different, you know, people having different colors? There are some people, some absolutely other type of people and we are other type of people. Then you have to believe that Adam and Eve, they are, you know, our great, great, grand grandmothers and father. So the belief in those, the, these two things can bring human beings closer. Although they might have different colors, they might be speaking different languages, they might be living in different parts of the world. I want to in invite your attention that I delivered a speech in 1968. It's about 26 years. That is now published in Urdu also, 
قرآن اور امن عالم اینڈ انگلش آلسو قرآن دا ورلڈ پیس اینڈ آئی یو نو ڈسکسڈ دس کوشچن آف ورلڈ پیس ایٹ تھری لیولس فرسٹ آف آل دیر کین بی نو پیس ان دی ورلڈ انلیس پیپل ہیو انر پیس ود ان دیم دی انر ٹرینکولیٹی If you are not at peace with your own self, how can you be at peace with others? And Iman is the basis of Amun, inner peace, tranquility, satisfaction. Nafse mutmainna, no conflicts, no frustrations. La khafun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun. If people have peace within them, they will emit peace. And every human being in a Muslim society, now the second word is Islam. Again peace, salamati. The social peace, and we are discussing in this Surah Al-Mubarakah, don't laugh at each other, don't look down upon each other, don't deride each other, don't be backbiting each other. All these things. Be brothers. Behave like brothers. There's a very beautiful definition of who is a Muslim. The Prophet said, Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimina. Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadihi. A Muslim is a person from whose hands and tongue the Muslims are safe. He is doing no harm to any Muslim. Neither by his tongue nor by his hand. Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna. A Muslim is a person from whose tongue and hands all Muslims are safe. He is not doing any harm to any Muslim, neither through his tongue nor his hand. So this is the social peace. Then the international peace, the global peace, The only permanent, and that is going to be the final stage, and that is that the just world order of Islam should dominate the whole globe. All people should belong to this community of Muslims. They should all become, and they should all qualify this definition of a Muslim. Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yadihi. this society, this whole world. But till such time, and this is going to happen. When I visited last year, I got recorded, you know, my lectures regarding the caliphate, the global caliphate, the prophecy of the prophet, that before the end of this world, the system of Khilafah Ala Min Hajin Nubuwa will prevail over the whole of the globe. This is going to happen. How it can be achieved, all these things I discussed last time. And there's the recording, TV, uh, this video as, as well as audio of 20 hours. And there I have discussed these things. But till such time that, that global just world order of Islam, this is the, the new world order today, which has not been able to establish itself up till now. There are still some hard nuts to crack. in the form of China or North Korea. Then you know some smaller nations are also still challenging, not accepting the supremacy and hegemony of this new world order. Iran is one of them, Sudan is one of them, Libya is one of them. And Pakistan also was one of them, I can't say whether it is one of them or not at this, at, at this the present time. Anyhow that new world order is trying its best trying hard to establish itself for the whole of the globe. And this is actually the Jew world order. They are in the clutches of the Zionism. But this Jew world order, JWO, has to change into JWO, just world order of Islam. Initials will remain the same, just world order. Ad-Dinul Haq. And this Ad-Dinul Haq will dominate the whole of the globe. But before that, there can be enmity. The hatred can be decreased to a great extent. 
if you propagate and emphasize this ayah, Ya ayyuhan naas, inna khalaqnaakum min zakarin wa unsa, wa ja'alnaakum shubam wa kabaila, le ta'arafu inna akramakum min dallahi atqaakum, inna allaha alimun khabir. For the interim period, this ayah is the only refuge. But finally, actually, the just world order of Islam will be established, inshallah. At least I have no doubt. Only one thing I can't say surely, when it will come to happen. In Adri, a karibun, ambaidun ma tu adun. I don't know whether what is being promised to you has come near or it is at a distance. It is still far off, I can't say. But it is going to happen, there's no doubt about it. Now this much about ayah number 13. Now we go to ayah 14 to 17, leaving the only last ayah. Because, you know, the subject matter of these four ayats is one. So I propose today to first of all translate these four ayats. So you have an understanding, a concept of the subject, the subject which is being discussed here. Then I shall discuss some of the aspects in detail. Qalat al-Arabu Amanna. These Bedouins are claiming, I have added the word these, Al-Arab. When there is Alif Lam added, it makes a proper noun. Some proper, some definite Arab are mentioned here, not all the Arab. Arab is the plural of Arabiyun. Arabiyun a person who used to dwell in the desert. Not any town, no village, no cities. They were always roaming from this place to other place. Wherever there is some, you know, rain and some grass grows, they go there. They fix their tents there, they live there. Then they move to another place. They were called the Arabi Yun, and the plural is Arab. But here, Alif Lam has been added, some people among the Arab. Qalat al-Arabu Amanna, these are Bedouins, are claiming we have come to believe, we have attained the faith. Qul, tell them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lam tu minu. You have not at all come to believe. You have not at all become moments. Don't be misguided. Don't be mistaken. Why I have added this not at all? Because in Arabic language you have two modes of negation in the past tense. Either you add ma to the past verb. Ma amantum. You have not come to believe. But if the phrase muzara is used and before that lam is added, it's more emphatic denial. Not at all. You have not at all come to believe. Walakin qulu aslamna. But, walakin is the same which we, we use in Urdu. Lakin. Walakin. But, qulu, say or you may say, you can say, aslamna. We have become Muslims. Or to translate literally, we have submitted. We have surrendered. We have given up resistance. Literal meanings would be we have submitted, surrendered, or given up resistance. And technically, we have become Muslims. You can say. And up till this time, the real faith has not at all entered your hearts. Again, yadkhul fele muzare. Lamma is the same as lam. Not at all. Wa lamma yadkhul al imanu fi qulubikum. Up till this time, real iman, real faith, real belief has not as yet entered your hearts. Now this is the condition. Some people claim that we have come to believe, and the. Prophet, Prophet has been ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell them, you are mistaken, 
You have not at all come to believe. What you can say, what you may say is that you have become Muslims, you have surrendered. Now first of all we should try to understand who were they. As I told you, after the Treaty of Hudaybiya, when the Bedouins saw the change of the direction of the wind, now the sun is rising, the sun of Islam is rising. The sun of the Quraysh is setting. So seeing this change in the conditions, so many of them became Muslims, entered the folds of Islam, and they claimed we have become Muslims, we have become Mormons. To them it is being said that you have surrendered, no doubt. You have become Muslims, no doubt. But if you think you have attained to faith, you have real Iman, you are mistaken. But in this condition even, وَإِن تُطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ If you obey Allah and His Messenger, لَا يَلِتْكُمْ مِنْ عَمَالِكُمْ شَيَا Allah will not deprive you of the reward of any of your deeds. Allah will accept. Although in principle it appears to be wrong. But they had no faith. No deed of theirs, no act of theirs should have been acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a question mark. There's a problem. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to two of his attributes. Inna Allah ghafoorun rahim. This is out of his mercy, out of his forgiveness. Because he is forgiving and he is merciful. He is doing this leniency towards you. That even though you have not attained to the real faith, the real faith has not entered your hearts up till now. But if you obey, when you say we surrender, Aslamna, it means we have now to obey Allah and obey Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the minimum requirement. If you fulfill it, because Allah is forgiving, Allah is merciful, Allah is lenient, Allah is Rauf, Allah is Rahim. Allah will not deprive you of the rewards of your, any of your good deeds. But there is a note of caution here. This obedience has to be total, not partial. Partial obedience is no obedience at all. It is the mockery of obedience. It has to be total. And please here refer to ayah number 85 of Surah Al-Baqarah. أَفَتُوَ مِنُونَ بِبَعْزِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفَرُونَ بِبَعْزِ Do you accept a part of our book, a part of the law, a portion of the Sharia, وَتَكْفَرُونَ بِبَعْزِ and reject the other? فَمَا جَذَاءُ مَنْ يَفَلُ ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمِ اللَّهِ خِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنِيَا so there can be no punishment for those who take to this attitude except that they should be put to extreme humiliation in the life of this world. And on the day of judgment, they will be returned, they will be thrown in the worst of the punishments. And Allah is not unaware of what you are doing. Now there are two questions about this ayah. Number one, if they were apparently Muslim but not really Mormon, were they Munafiqs? If they were Munafiq, no deed, no good deed of a Munafiq is acceptable. Here Allah says, no, if you continue obeying, I shall accept your deeds, I shall accept your prayers, your psalm, your zakah, 
वट एवर यू आर डूइंग अकॉर्डिंग टू दी शरिया आई विल एक्सेप्ट ऑल दो यू डोंट हैव द रियल इमान सो इट्स अ वेरी पिक्यूलियर पोजिशन प्रेजेंटेड इन दिस आया दट देयर कैन बी ए कंडीशन वेन ए मुस्लिम इज ए मुस्लिम ए लीगल मुस्लिम आउटवर्डली मुस्लिम बट इन इज हार्ट देर इज नाइदर ईमान नॉर निफा to some people it is unimaginable some people say and, and there are so many mufassirin who say that they were munafiqs but the last is that real iman has not as yet even entered your hearts what does it mean a muslim without iman is a munafiq but the question is How can the good deeds of a munafiq be acceptable to Allah? Here Allah is saying in clear words, "Wa in tuti Allah wa Rasulahu la yalit kum in amalikum shaya." This difficult problem has been solved by Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah. He wrote a book, Kitab al Iman. It's quite a voluminous book. and all the discussions about iman which were there in his time he has fully done justice to all the issues and it is a very important event of my life just by out of an incident i came you know to under, to know that this is his opinion i had that idea already myself and a very learned person Maulana Abdul Ghaffar Hassan, maybe many people know him. He was one of the top most leaders of Jamaat e Islami at time, at one time in Pakistan. We were in a mosque in Etekaf in the last days of Ramadan. There we disagreed, and we were discussing about this ayah. My point of view was that they were not munafik because Allah says. I will accept your obedience, your your acts and deeds. I will not deprive you of the good rewards of your good deeds. They cannot be monarchies. He was insisting that when Allah says that the real faith has not entered your hearts, they were Muslim. A Muslim without real faith is a monarchy. Suddenly, a person came. One of the ulama of that city. He sent us a book. That is that book, Kitab al Iman, by Imam Tamia, Ibn Tamia, rahimahullah. Because I came to know that you both are in the mosque doing a tikaf, I am presenting this book. Maybe you study it. And when I opened, it, just you know, the same subject was discussed. And Ibn Tamia clearly says that there is a condition of a Muslim. He is a Muslim, but neither a Muslim nor a Munafik. And I actually explain it through the principles of mathematics. A Muslim is outwardly a Muslim, legal Muslim. Within his heart, there will be three conditions. You have, you know, in the graphs, the zero point. On the right side, plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five. Go on. Left side, minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. And in between the two, there is this zero level. This zero level in the heart. No iman, no nifaq, but there is Islam. And you can appreciate that most of the people who entered the pale of Islam. after the victory came to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they fell in this category they were neither mu'mins nor they were munafiqs munafiq were only those people who were deceiving there were certain people who only accepted islam with the view to wait now for some time and then we shall see if there is any chance then we shall disrupt this islamic order from within just as abdullah ibn sabah the jew from yemen he entered 
Islam, but with a view to commit sabotage from within. So those were the Munafiks. But they are worse people and mostly they fall in this category. They didn't have any idea of enmity and waiting for some chance to commit sabotage or disruption from within the society, Muslim society. But they don't, didn't have the, the positive Iman either. Just because now all people are going and all people are accepting Islam. Now because Islam is the rising power, go ahead. It's no use continuing resistance. Now the matter is clinched. When Quraysh have recognized Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what can we do? How can we stop him? The supreme power in the Arabian Peninsula, it had to have a treaty with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his companions. So go ahead, accept Islam. So this, accept Islam, this acceptance of Islam was neither positively with real Iman nor negatively with an intention of internal sabotage later on. But in their hearts, there was neither Iman nor Nifas, but they were Muslims. Now please come to a very important point. If we look to the Muslims of today, 99.9% .9 of the Muslims fall in, in this category. Some of the more enthusiastic activists of Islam, they tend to call the Muslims of today as Munafiq. Why? They are not practicing Islam. They say we accept Allah as our Lord, not accepting His commandments. They say, Muhammad, we have accepted. He is the messenger of Allah. Razito billahi rabban wa bi Muhammadin rasool wa bi Islam in deena. Not following him. They say we believe in Quran, but not accepting the injunctions of the, of the book. So they are Munafiq. No, they are not Munafiqs. Nor they have the real Iman. If they had the real Iman, how come they are not practicing? If there is real Iman in the heart, the total behavior must change. Iman is not, not such a useless thing. Real Iman, real faith, real conviction. It will bring about a revolution in your attitude, in your behavior. So neither we have Iman. And I give you a very simple proof that we are not Mormons. Allah says in Surah Al Imran, Wala tahinu, wala tahzanu, antumul a'launa in kuntum mu'min. Don't have any grief. Don't be disheartened. I promise you, you will be the supreme. You will be the highest in the world if you are real moments. And what we are actually today, the lowest. So by and large, collectively the Ummah doesn't have Iman. There are individuals, but they may not exceed the amount of salt in the, in the flour that you need for baking your bread. Not more than that. Basically, the whole of the Ummah is without Iman, but not Nifaq either. Don't be mistaken. They don't have any bad intentions against Islam. They don't have any negative intentions to destroy Islam, enmity of Islam, enmity of Allah, enmity of Muhammad. No, no. Majority of the Muslims. They don't have nifaq either. They don't have Iman. But they are, they are Muslims. And this ayah, in this respect, is the most important ayah of the Quran. This is the only ayah which is giving you this third category. A Muslim, a mere Muslim. Only a Muslim. Neither a Mu'min nor a Munafiq. Legally, outwardly, he is a Muslim because he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. He is a Muslim. He may be Fasiq, he may be Fajr, but he is a Muslim. Now a Muslim can have three conditions regarding his inner personality, his heart. Either he is Mu'min positively, or he is a munafiq negatively. Or 
the heart is absolutely empty, it's zero level, neither positive iman nor negative nifaq. And this is the condition. That was the condition of many Bedouins who entered the period of Islam after Islam became dominant in the Arabian Peninsula. And this is the condition of 99.9 .9 recurrent percent Muslims today. We don't have Iman, but we are neither Munafiq also. We are Muslims, legal Muslims. And for us, this part of the ayah, wa in wa rasulahu la yalitkum min amalikum shayah. It's a very big ray of hope. If you look down into your heart and you find there's vacuum, Iman is not there. Don't get disappointed. Don't be despaired. There's a ray of hope. Allah says, even in this condition, if you continue obeying me and my messenger, I will accept your deeds. Don't be disheartened. وَإِن تُطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ لَا يَلِتْكُمْ مِنْ عَمَالِكُمْ شَيَعَ But with one word of caution, this obedience has to be total. No partial obedience. Accepting one commandment, rejecting the other. Keeping one commandment, taking it above your heads. The other commandment, trampling under your feet. Well, this is mockery. This is laughing at the Sharia. This is the biggest disrespect to Allah and His Messenger and His Deen. But if you continue obeying, La yalitkum min amalikum shaya, inna Allah ghafoor rahim. Verily, Allah is forgiving. Allah is merciful. It would have been. It would have been. 100% correct if he had decided that no good deed of yours can be accepted unless you have positive iman in your hearts. But because he is merciful, he is forgiving, he is lenient, he is rauf, he is encouraging you, he is giving you the hope that your good deeds, your obedience should be accepted, even if there might not be iman in your heart. Now, in this background arises a question, then who is a Mu'min? See the logic, the sequence, the rational sequence. If it, ha it has been declared in unequivocal terms about some people, you can't claim to be Mu'min. All that you can claim is that you can say you are Muslims. Then the logical question arises, who is a Mormon? Well, I want to be accepted as a Mormon. I want that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts me as a Mormon. I must be told what are the criteria, what are the prerequisites, what conditions I have to fulfill to qualify as a Mormon. So this ayah, if you keep this context, you know, this sayak and sabak, you can very well appreciate that this is the most important place in the Quran for a definition, a comprehensive definition of who is a moment. And that is why we find, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا Verily, the true moments are only those who believe in Allah and His Messenger and then have no doubts about them. This is the only place in the Qur'an where you have these additional words of Lam Yartabu, no Reb. This is from the root Reb. Everybody knows this word. Zalik al Kitabu la Raibafi. This Qur'an is a book wherein there is nothing doubtful, no Reb, no Shak. And this is the word Yartabu. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ And إِنَّمَا, please note, it's called Uslubul Hasr. Style for limiting and restricting in Arabic language. What's the difference when you say Zayd is an Alim? 
And when you say only Zayd is Alim, the second sentence has a different connotation. Here, Ilm is Munhasir, restricted to the personality of Zayd. When, according to the first sentence, Zayd can be an Alim, any other person can also be an Alim. Zayd is an Alim, and only Zayd is the Alim. It's the difference. Innama gives this sense of restricting. Innamal mu'minun. True mu'min are only those people. Al-lazeen amanu billahi wa rasoolihi. Who came to believe in Allah and his messenger. Summa lam yartabu. But this belief in Allah and his messenger reached the level of personal conviction. The conviction in the heart. That is why it was said about the former people. The real faith has not as yet entered your hearts. If it enters the heart of a person, it becomes a conviction. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا First precondition, prerequisite of qualifying as a mu'min. That this iman should reach the level of conviction. Which we call Yaqeen. And Iqbal says very beautifully, Yaqeen paida karay nada, Yaqeen se haat aati hai, Wo darveshi ke jiske saamne jhukti hai faqfuri. You need Yaqeen. Not only a verbal attestation of Iman. Yaqeen. Conviction. So, the first prerequisite, Yaqeen. Iman reaching the level of Yaqeen. And the second, وَجَّاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And then they waged jihad for the cause of Allah and spent all their worldly belongings as well as their bodily capabilities and resources. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ Again that Uslubu al-Hasr. Only such persons are true. If they claim to be Mu'min, Ulaika humus sadiqu. This we call in Arabic Jame or Mane Tarif. This is the logic. If you want to define a thing, the definition should be Jame. All the essential elements of that thing should be included in that definition. It should be Mane. Nothing additional should be included in it. So definition, it should be jame and mane. All the necessary elements must be included. No additional concept should be allowed to enter. So this ayah, ayah number 15 gives us, and that way I told you, this place of the Qur'an, these two ayat are one of the most profound ayat of the Qur'an, most important ayat of the Qur'an. Only at this place in Qur'an, Islam and Iman have been differentiated, absolutely differentiated. Islam accepted? Iman? No, you don't have any Iman. And then a definition of Mu'min, who is a Mu'min? And two prerequisites, Yaqeen within and jihad in action. Without these two elements, there can be no iman, there can be no mu'min. Aqoolu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisaayri al-muslimin wa al-muslimat.